Welcome to Camp Hill Presbyterian Church. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Hear now the proclamation of the entrance into Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday. Our reading this year is from Matthew's Gospel. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee.
Friends, we do not confess our sin in order to receive God's grace. We confess our sins so that we might enjoy God's grace. Let us pray together, confessing our sin. Loving God, we know that you love us, so we confess that we have let you down. Every day, we betray you, deny you, misunderstand you, crucify you. We betray you when we are selfish or unkind. We deny you when we do not speak out for justice and truth. We misunderstand you when we misquote scripture to suit our own purposes. We are truly sorry and we wait for your word of love. In this time of silence, we live to the Lord our personal and private confession of sin. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Our words of assurance this morning come from our first scripture lesson for the day, from Psalm 118. Hear these words from the psalmist. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of our Lord. Dearly beloved, in Christ, God answers us and sets us free. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are all truly forgiven. Amen. We pray together now our prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own, speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit that we, that we may receive grace to show Christ's love in our lives given to your service. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us listen now to our first lesson for the day. I'll be reading from Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, and then I'll skip to verse 19 and read through verse 29. Let us listen now for the word of the Lord. This is a song of victory. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. 
This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is usually one of the most festive days of the church year, filled with great joy and pageantry. All the bright and beautiful colors of spring greet us as we make our way into church. Worship begins with a procession of pastors and choir as people wave their palms singing Hosanna to the Lord. An air of excitement fills the sanctuary. Yet this morning we can't help but be acutely aware of what is going on around us. The excitement of this day tempered by an empty sanctuary our joy a bit mellowed by the concern of our hearts, our minds focused on the news of the day, making it just that much harder to be transported back in time to those crowded streets in Jerusalem and celebrate the triumphal entry of our Lord into the holy city. Some pastors have opted out of reading the Psalm, Palm Sunday texts, and have chosen instead to make this Passion Sunday, which is perfectly acceptable and understandable. Because who would throw a parade at a time like this? Not just because of the absence of a crowd, but is there really anything for us to celebrate? Yet it struck me that same question lingered in the air on that first Palm Sunday. If we remember the backdrop to that parade, which was the impending death of Jesus, what was there to celebrate when those streets of Jerusalem were filled with crowds to the overflowing. Most of them were pilgrims who had traveled from near and far to celebrate Passover, the Feast of Freedom, commemorating the seminal event in the history of Israel, the Exodus, when God delivered them from their slavery in Egypt into freedom and new life. A critical juncture in the sacred story of God's promise to Israel, revealing to them and to us that our God is an abiding presence who rescues people from their distress once freed from their slavery while wandering in the wilderness, Israel also came to know and experience the God who provides and our God who guides. So from that moment on, every year at Passover, generations of Jewish people gather together in their homes to retell the story of their journey from slavery to freedom by the strong and mighty hand of the Lord. 
just as we do each time we celebrate communion. We recite our history with God, culminating in our deliverance from slavery to sin through the life and death and resurrection of our Lord. Against that backdrop, that first Palm Sunday parade was really a freedom march, a march on Jerusalem led by Jesus, followed by a large crowd of people in search of freedom. Some of them were marching, hoping that Jesus was indeed the one sent to liberate them from their Roman oppressors. Others among the crowd had already found their freedom because they had experienced firsthand the liberating power of Jesus' love. Spanning the crowd, we recognize a few familiar faces. A woman smiling and cheering who we immediately recognize as the woman Jesus healed of her bleeding when she reached out and touched him in faith. Behind her, we see Mary and Martha clinging arm in arm, jumping for joy for the man who raised their beloved brother from the dead. And there he is, Lazarus, living proof of the resurrection power of our God. And waving her palm branch, she ripped off a tree as the woman who met Jesus. That day she went to the well to draw water. A day she'll never forget because it was the day Jesus gave her back. Her sense of dignity and self-worth that she had lost through a series of failed marriages. Now she's marching head, head held high in front of that wee little man named Zacchaeus who now feels six feet tall because Jesus helped him to choose a more honorable way of earning a living. Sitting on the sidewalk, cradling her knees, rocking back and forth, humming the sweet sounds of amazing grace, is the woman Jesus forgave for her many acts of adultery. Right in front of her comes a woman dancing with reckless abandon. Right in front of Jesus, down the middle of the street. Our eyes can't believe it's the same woman who only months before had been bent over, crushed under the weight of her life's struggle and pain. Until Jesus came and gave her the strength that raised her up. Striking a more dignified pose as he strides alongside Jesus is Nicodemus in all his priestly garb, wearing a proud smile for this young rabbi who answered all his questions during their countless hours of heated debate. Trailing behind him is a young father, tears streaming down his face as he chants over and over, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So filled with gratitude to Jesus for having saved his daughter's life. For a Roman officer, that public display of affection is itself quite a spectacle, but he doesn't care. And keeping stride with him is a man wearing a new suit, sporting a freshly groomed haircut and shave. We hardly recognize him as the one everyone called crazy until Jesus expelled the demon of his depression that had entombed him in a shroud of darkness. 
young boys and girls about to become men and women marching along with signs and waving banners because they could finally envision the kingdom of God here on earth. They had seen Jesus eating with sinners and dining at the home of outcasts. We can hear them shout and cheer with renewed hope for the one who shatters all barriers of race and gender, culture and religion. There they were, marching shoulder to shoulder, a crowd of living witnesses to the liberating power of Jesus' love. It was a march that caused quite the stir. As Matthew wrote, the whole city was in turmoil, wondering as they see this march on Jerusalem, who is this man riding on a colt like some heroic king? We know he is the one who has marched right into the center of our lives time and time again, rescuing us from our distress and liberating us from all that seeks to enslave us, all that seeks to rob us of our freedom and joy. So even now, in the midst of a pandemic, in this time of great uncertainty and upheaval, we do stop and give thanks and celebrate our own exodus experiences, that we might give all glory, laud, and honor to our Redeemer King. We are now about to move into the sacrament of Holy Communion. If you have not already done so, I would invite you during the hymn to uh, get some bread or some crackers and some juice, wine, or water so that you may participate with us in our Lord's Supper.
As we prepare to commune together, let us confess our faith using the ancient creed, the Apostles' Creed, as together we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We come with hunger in our hearts and thirst in our souls, trusting that our Lord and Savior by his grace will satisfy our every need. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, our creator and sustainer, in your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You made us in your image, setting us in the world to love and serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. From generation to generation, you have guided us, sending prophets to turn us from wayward paths into the way of righteousness. Out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son among us to redeem us and to be the way to eternal life. As one of us, he knew our joys and sorrows, our struggles and our temptation. In him we see what you created us to be. By his suffering and death he freed us from sin and death. Risen from the grave, he leads us to the joy of new life. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the eve of his death, shared a meal with his followers. Taking the bread, he gave thanks blessed and broke it, and offered to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal he took and poured the cup, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. We eat and drink in memory of Jesus and his great love for us and our world. And in this simple meal, we proclaim again his death and resurrection, giving life to all people. And in silence now, let us pray for whatever grace it is we desire this day. We pray, O oh God, for our world, that you might pour out your healing power upon our land and upon our whole world, that you might grant each of us your peace and courage and strength for the living of these days. We pray for all those who are ill, whether it be in body, mind, or spirit, that you would bless them with your healing power and your sustaining and comforting love. We pray all these things, trusting in your goodness and your mercy, as we have witnessed it in the life and the death and resurrection of your Son, our Savior. And so, as his bold and courageous disciples, we pray that prayer he taught us, as with one voice we pray, our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the bread of life. Eat and receive the grace of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the cup of salvation. All of you drink of it. Let us pray together. God, our help and strength, you have satisfied our hunger with this Eucharistic food. Strengthen our faith that through death and resurrection of your Son, we may be led to salvation, for he is the Lord, now and forever. Amen. As we move into the holiest week of our year, we invite you to join us Thursday night at 7 p.m., again virtually, as we celebrate the last meal Jesus had with his disciples in our Monday Thursday service, and then Good Friday at 7 p.m. to join us again virtually for our Tenebrae service. And now may the grace and mercy and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion and fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with you and all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen.